Hi, this is Rich Flingy, and I'm here today with my old friend from EVTV, Bill Bear, an electric car builder, and we're going to talk about his conversion of a gasoline-powered Cub Cadet to an all-electric drive. And Bill was gracious enough to have me down to his place in Linden, Tennessee. Bill, as you may remember, was the builder of the Tesla Doka. This was a very powerful build that Jack Rickard did at EVTV that involved changing out the gasoline engine of the Volkswagen Doka pickup truck and converting it to uh, a Tesla electric drive. And it was a powerful build. In this first view, let's take a look at Bill's Cub Cadet and where all of the conversion took place, which is under the front section here of the hood. And the first thing you will see is the electric motor, which is a AC motor. AC motors have an advantage because they are sealed and they have uh, a little bit better capabilities than a DC motor. However, they're usually higher cost and require more battery power. You can also see just in front of the uh, AC motor is a power bar that is a connecting post system that is used quite often in electric vehicle builds. Here we have the meat and potatoes of an electric vehicle conversion, which is the stack battery. Those are batteries connected in series to increase the voltage of the pack to a size that is compatible with the electric motor. Also next to that battery pack is a battery equalizer. An equalizer keeps all the voltages the same in each individual cell. So for example, a uh, 48 volt battery would actually in lithium batteries would be 12 stacks in series of four voltage cell packs. And you want to keep each one of those cells packs in the correct voltage range. Next we have some more traditional parts, which is a battery charger and then a DC to DC converter. The DC to DC converter converts the higher voltage pack of say 96 volts and brings it back down to 12 volts, which runs the auxiliary powers of the electric conversion. Uh, here we have a contactor switch. That is a very important part. When you connect high voltage devices, you can't just throw a switch. It, the switching is contained inside a sealed container and it allows the two points to come together and control any sparking or arcing that occurs when high voltage hits other pieces of metal, basically. Uh, this is the cooling tanks uh, using high voltage. And any power unit, it does create heat. And electricity creates resistance that requires that you have uh a cooling system. You'll also notice the braided hoses. Braided hoses are a, an upgrade from traditional rubber hoses that you see sometimes used in automobiles. They're very important. Uh, a lot of race car use drivers and boats and some areas that have high vibration will use braided hoses. We like them with electric bills because obviously you don't want fluid leak around electrical devices. Next, we have a set of fuses. The fuses are uh, critical in that if you have a short or a ground, uh, it allows um, the resistance to create a break in the fuse and it will uh, stop that circuit. Of course, here we have the wiring harness, which I will not get into, but it's a complex part of the build in that all of these devices require wiring and you may in an electric conversion get into at the very end of it uh, 50 to 100 little crimp connections to put together a harness to connect all the switching lights all the other control units in the build so now we've got bill's build explained and let's take a ride on the tractor <laughs> 